Hello everybody, this is Grandmaster Brian Smith with ChessLecture.com bringing to you the third part of my series Coffee House Chess. In the first two we saw some really interesting, somewhat flawed games. Here we're going to see a game that uh, really looks like Coffee House Chess, but uh, it was actually very well played by White. Uh, there's no, <clears throat> there were no bluffs or, or anything like that. However, the fact that White pretty much put all of his pieces on pre uh, and just seems to uh, just play in extremely wild fashion is why I included this, it in this series. And it's an extremely beautiful game, too, so I hope you'll enjoy it. This is a game by uh, Viktor Kuprechik, who had white against uh, Sunye Neto. Um, he, Kuprechik is well known uh, was, uh, as a, uh, uh, a really aggressive attacking player, creative player, and we'll see that in this game if you haven't heard that before. Uh, so if you're interested, you can check out some of his other games. Um, so Kuprechik uh, began with e4, c5, now knight c3. So I'm not sure what his intention was uh, in response to some of Black's other possible moves here, like d6 or e6, whether he wanted to play f4 or he was just trying to avoid something. But after a6, he transposed back into a uh, an open Sicilian with knight f3. So he's, it's going to become a Paulson a Sicilian. b5 black played. Of course, e6 would also directly transpose here by playing this move b5. Black has decided on the early b5 system, which is presumably what he wanted to play anyway. So d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, uh, bishop b7. So black still delays e6. It's not a really big difference here, though, after white's next move. Bishop d3 would also probably be played after e6 as well. Uh, and now e6, so this is move fits in with black setup, and we're back to the main position, or a main position that could occur in this in this line. Normally, instead of bishop e7, black would uh, reach this position with the bishop still on c8, and uh, bishop b7 is one of the moves, but black in that case would also have queen to b6, which is more common, trying to drive the white knight back first before continuing development. However, this bishop b7 line is also played. White castled and now queen c7. So next move black went knight c6. Uh, and it, it looks like it's not a particularly accurate way to play here. It's a dangerous way to play this knight c6 and combine it with the early queen c7. Of course, both moves look pretty natural. The queen c7 move is often played in uh, various Sicilians, uh, especially in the Paulson. Uh, but if black is going to go knight c6, then uh, nowadays knight c6 is more um, is a more... Uh, this move order is 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 uh, more played and probably more accurate. Uh, so the point is that that after knight takes c6, bishop c6, and then let's say queen e2. Of course, white has other moves here. There's this knight d5 move, which can come sooner or later, and happened in the game that we're going to see, uh, is is not as effective when the queen's on c on d8. So it's not attacking the queen and. And uh, there have been some games with this kind of stuff. Black just ignores the knight generally on d5, d5 for, for a time. So if he's going to play knight c6, he should uh, avoid queen c7, I think. Uh, 